Welcome back, gang. It's LT from DeltiasGaming.com. And yes, I'm doing a face cam video so you can make fun of my jawline in the comments. No, but seriously, I've been leveling a couple characters up. Uh, Scotty Too Hotty, and then Big, you know what, Jake. Two Wardens, one Stam, one Magic. And I've learned a lot leveling in Elder Scrolls Online 2017. So I want to kind of share my tips with you. So this is gonna be for someone like wanting to power level. Not only your level, your champion points, but things like Undaunted, Mage's Guild, Fighter's Guild, things that are going to advance your character, improve your performance, and do it quickly. Though it's not exactly always the most fun way to do it. The most common thing people are gonna to wanna to know about is how to level your character's actual level quickly. The Elder Scrolls has came a long way uh, since back in the day when they had bet levels. Now we still have a huge champion point gap, but from level three, if you skip this tutorial to 50 on this guy, only took me four and a half hours to reach endgame. So the good news is you can level a new character really quickly, but it's not exactly fun and or easy all the time. So the thing you're going to want to do is basically get a partner and grind zombies. I've done tons and tons of videos on grinding before, basically finding an area with dense zombies in each zone. So I'm going to go over this quickly. I'm not going to show you specific ones because people will freak out at me. Every single zone has one. Now what has been the meta or the optimal way to level is here in Skyreach Catacombs. It's still okay to do it. The problem is for whatever reason, uh, Zoss basically nerfed the experience modifiers inside of the instance. So what happens is there's a double XP event, you have a scroll going on, all these things don't ex add to the value of the experience of the mobs. So let's say it's 430 experience. Well, if I go in the open world outside of this instance, I'm getting 1,000, 2,000 if I have all the modifiers. So it's a lot more uh, advantageous to grind out in the open world like it used to be prior like to one Tamriel. So these, these areas out here. Now the DLC areas, the new one tomorrow when there's a couple of really good grind spots. All you have to do is find mobs that are densely packed. You want undead and daedroth. The reason why, a couple. Fighters Guild, you're gonna wanna level this up no matter if you're magic or stamina, it's just useful to have leveled up. And guess what? You get it by killing Daedra. Also, Daedra give you uh, ultimate when you kill them. So it's just much, much, much easier to kill them over and over and over. You're also advancing your skill line, which is really important if you're stamina build specifically. The thing about the Fighters Guild is as soon as you hit that level three, you get the tutorial done, you're gonna wanna go to the main town. Like so right here, I'm Daggerfall Covenant, right? You're gonna go in the tavern. You're gonna to wanna to get Undaunted. It's gonna unlock the skill line for you. Now, if you don't unlock it, it will retroactively grant these uh, experience that you get. Fighters Guild, it will not. So you need to pick it up right away. So you go in your town, go to the tavern, get your Undaunted. Then you go to the Fighters Guild and Mages Guild. You wanna lock both of those skill lines right away. And so you can start collecting lore books to advance the Mages Guild. You got the Fighters Guild, which is just killing stuff. And then Unda uh, Undaunted, which is gonna really, 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 really help you once you get Endgame. Unlock those right away. So a couple more tips about leveling your actual character's level quickly. It's XP multiplier. So obviously a double XP event. Well, that's double. You also uh, can group with someone, that's 10% more experience. You can get married by doing the Rings of Mara, though that does either come with a collector's edition or you have to pay for it with crowns. That's 10% more XP. They have XP scrolls and or potions that you can buy in game, 150% XP. Also subscribing gives you 10 more per percent XP. So there's a lot of factors and that's what I did. Hit it during a double XP weekend, found a good loop where no one was outside, not instant space, and I just sat there and did it. That's all it took. You can even modify it further by crafting training gear, specifically um, at really low levels. And I only crafted twice, level three, uh, excuse me, level four, and then level 30. So what I did was I crafted purple uh, quality training gear on all my gear. So I did five of my primary army type, armor type, magic user are gonna use light. 
medium armor for a stam user. Then I did one heavy, one light, just to get the skill lines leveling. That really works very, very well. If you don't have access to crafters, you can still buy these in the specific towns that you start in. So there's actually vendors here that really no one ever goes to, of woodworkers, tailors, and they have actual gear that you can buy that has a training trait on them. So they're usually green quality, they're not max quality, max value, but you're talking a couple percent here and there. So as you start getting better and better items, selling them off, doing whatever, you can continually upgrade your gear and continue to have that training XP bonus. Makes a big difference, whether you have a crafter or not. So one of the problems you're gonna run into is uh, leveling quickly is great, four and a half hours to hit 50, but once you hit 50, your character is not very powerful. And what makes your character powerful is you only have so many active skills on your bar. What makes it powerful is the passives, specifically in your armor. So whatever armor you're gonna use, light, medium, or heavy, and then your class specific passives, this is what makes your character powerful and your weapon passives. So as you can see, I, I've just hit endgame with this guy and I have basically nothing except a few skills unlocked, a few passives unlocked. So obviously the next thing to do in advancing our character's power and potential is skill points. And this is something that you can actually do quickly. My method is I basically can get 20 skill points in about two hours. What do I do? As soon as I hit level 10, you're gonna get an Alliance War pop-up. So Alliance War, whether you want to PvP or not, set your home, whatever campaign you want to do it in. You go there, there's a starter quest. It takes you maybe 15 minutes, and you get two skill points out of that, and you'll probably pick up one, maybe two Sky Shards on your way. So you're looking at almost three skill points within 15 minutes, and it will unlock something very useful for you, even if you don't want to PvP, which is to do, do, do Alliance War, your skill line, Rapid Maneuvers. This is going to help you uh, gallop around looking for Sky Shards, Sky Shards, lore books, public dungeons, whatever you want to do. So it's very, very useful hitting this right at level 10 using that initial skill point. And if you skip over the quest, you'll get one skill point, but you won't get the two. So make sure you do it. It's worth it. It's a permanent thing. After I hit this, I hit level 50. Typically what I do is public dungeons. So you'll see here a million different zones. And basically every uh, area, Daggerfall, Ebonheart Pack, Aldemary Dominion, they each have about five zones in them, okay? You go to each zone, let's say Glenumbra here. Each zone has what's called a public dungeon, not like a delve where it's just a little loop, you kill a boss, maybe there's a sky shirt. Those are worth doing as well. But if you want really, 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 really quick skill points, go for the publics. Public dungeons, Glenumbra, come down here, Bad Man's Hollows. You can see it's a little bit different uh, marker than what you would get here on a delve. So it's like a big little cave thing. And why that's important is because there is one specific boss in each of these. Each zone has them, including Cold Harbor. So you got one in Glenumbra, Stormhaven, Rivens. You see when I'm going with this? About 16 of them. So each one has a boss in there specifically that you can kill for a skill point instantly. Plus, it has a Sky Shard within it as well. Do the math. 16 plus 16 Sky Shards. Very, very quick to do these. There's only one that requires a second player. You go to Dungeons here and you go to Public Dungeons under your achievements. You can actually see the specific boss that you need to kill. If you want me to make a separate video on each killing each of these bosses, I can. Let me know in the comments. But I would say just read your achievements. You're going to get used to doing these. But this is what you want to focus on initially getting those things done. The only one that requires uh, a second person is an Alakir. Basically, someone has to step on a puzzle, a uh, little puzzle thing at the end, and that's what unlocks the boss for you to kill. Other than that, every single one, including Cold Harbor, one boss, it's already there, you kill it, grab the Sky Shard, do the Cyrodiil quest, you're talking at least 20 skill points within two hours. That's really good return on investment of your time. All right, after you've acquired quite a few skill points, sky shards and that sort of thing, lore books, you can't really speed up quickly that I know of. Maybe if you do, leave it in the comments. But Undaunted, Undaunted is massive for your character's progression. So you have Undaunted Command, basically gives you synergies, give you uh, max stats, resources back. Incredible for group play. And then Undaunted Metal, max stats. Even if you have just one armor type, it's still 1%. It's still 2% with two ranks in here. 
every little bit, all these passives really make a big impact on your character's performance. So it's something you wanna get done. Level 45 unlocks a quest, okay? You can read each individual skill bar here, which will tell you actually how to do it. Complete dungeons and achievements, okay. So you got two ways to do this, ultra fast freaky way to do this. Get a really powerful team and crush veteran dungeons. So you can see that group dungeons, which is basically what used to be referred to as normal dungeons, has been separated into different achievement categories and they have veteran dungeons. Most dungeons now have a one and a two component. Uh, some that don't like Tempest Island and so forth. So you can do, let's say a uh, spindle clutch here, where is it, I've only done it a million times. You can do spindle clutch one, spindle clutch two, and you can do it on normal if you don't have a really powerful group with you. And you can do it on veteran if you do. Each one of these is gonna also give you a quest that can get a skill point. It's also gonna give you an option to do tons and tons of achievements. No death, speed, uh, and killing each boss, including there's like usually optional bosses in each of these. That's usually what I do after I get a character uh, enough skill points to get my armor passives maxed out, my weapons passives maxed out, my class specific passives maxed out, and my skill bars loaded out. Then I go into dungeon farming mode. Now, let's say you don't have a super powerful friends that are waiting on you hand and foot like I do. I have great friends and I appreciate all the things that you guys have been doing for me since I've came back. It's been amazing. So what I did is if I don't have people online, I'll either do a, a veteran, random veteran dungeon finder or specific dungeon finder. So this is what allows you to basically knock out those uh, normal dungeons if you don't have friends that you regularly play with because the normal version is significantly easier. And if you continue to die, it will actually make it easier for you. It's very noob friendly. Or if you don't have a lot of friends, you're not comfortable with your build or whatever, because not everyone sits around and plays this game all day. I get it. So I would recommend just doing the normals, at least completing each one uh, once will really boost your undaunted skill line. Also, if you're a solo player, you're gonna get pledges. You can complete them, normal or veteran. You get keys to get the monster helm, you see like I have, great. There's also a fourth quest in there that will actually give you a little bit of undaunted and you can get those from other players as well. They can share them back and forth. So you can say in zone, hey, does anyone have an undaunted you know, quest for today? Boom, get in a group, share it, go off and do it. You pick up a new one, get it, share it, so on and so forth. And lastly, there's another uh, thing called, uh, this one's on me, which is Undaunted Companions. Basically, you go to each one of these zones and you give a drink, buy a drink to a specific Undaunted member. I think it's 15 or 50 Undaunted, I'm not exactly sure. But a combination of doing these skills, trying to knock out these pledges every day, getting together groups or using the Dungeon Finder, you can literally get from Undaunted 1 to nine in one day. I've done it. It took a while, but I got it done. And then now another one that a lot of people get confused with is Alliance War, right? This is PVP. So if you read it here, improve the skill by increasing your Alliance rank. How do you do that? Alliance points. So once again, it's kind of like veteran dungeons. If you have a really good group together, that are just killing outnumbered massive amounts of people or you're a really good solo player and you're killing you know, people over and over and over and getting massive amounts of AP, this thing boosts really quick. Something to realize is there's a lot of dead servers in this game right now. So you can see seven day standard, dead. No CP, dead. So what you can do if you wanna cheese it or you not really feel comfortable with Cyrodiil, you don't know PVP, don't like it, but you need to unlock the skill lines, you go into Cyrodiil. They have Dells similar to the open world, usually a boss in there you can kill, uh, get an achievement, and they have uh, Sky Shards. What you do is you kill one of these bosses and you're gonna get an AP bonus of about 20%. If you're really just a solo player and just don't like PVP, you can just go and flip resources by yourself. It gives you a lot of AP if you're really just uncomfortable with PVP and wanna get it done. Get four buddies, go get your AP boost for an hour, screw around flipping resources or taking a keep in a dead server, and it's really easy if you're not comfortable with PVP. -ing. If you are comfortable with PVP and you have a good group or you're a really good solo player, well, you're probably not watching this video, but let's say you are, to make sure I'm right, what you wanna do is basically go all out on kills. It doesn't matter if you die. 
the, let the ego go. If you're trying to get AP, you'll see me on stream. I die all the time. It's okay. Everyone does. Even Cypher does, right? So what you want to do is go high burst, high damage, and go for kills. So we've gone over Alliance rank, and uh, there's one other thing you should level once you reach endgame to improve your character's performance, and that's alchemy. There's a passive in there that adds uh, duration to po uh, potions. This is actually really important if you're trying to optimize the power of your character. It has a 45 uh, second cooldown, potions do, okay? And what this does is it increases the duration by um, 30% at max level, so alchemy level 50. Why is that important? Because you see that if you drink these, these potions, they give you a passive for doing so that lasts a pretty long time, increasing your magic regeneration for 20 seconds, that's great. Now, if you can add 30 seconds to that, or 30% to that, and then the 45 second cooldown comes around, you're popping these things to basically get a major buff for free. That's why potions and alchemy are very, very vital in actual end game content. Easiest way I've found to do this um, now in the game, and I have a separate video on it, is if we go to our craft bags and alchemy, there's some very common ingredients. Alkest, you see here for uh, poisons. The, basically, the poisons are the much uh, easier to find of the two. And so what you do is you find some plants or potions that people don't like. Nightshade's really easy to get. Columbine? Not so much. And you just find potions or items that people don't want and are just trashing. Flesh larva. And then just make a crap ton of them. The thing you need to do is basically change out the water and put the skill point in. Every time, so you can increase your water, increase your gains, just keep getting swole. About 75, 50 waters at each level to finally reach endgame, level 50. But these are the tips that I've had, that I've found, coming back to the game, leveling in, in this type of environment in 2017, and I don't want to ruin any grind spots, you guys get angry at me. So, if you have something else to add that's really useful, please leave it in the comments, because like I said, the community has been great. Red Cobra, thank you so much for your 2 million gold donation on PCNA. Faker, thank you so much for the new Ebon Shadow Motives. It's been awesome coming back and you guys' reaction, so I, I can't say thank you enough. I'm fortunate that I can do this every day and share these tips, so let me know what videos you would like to see, um, more helpful things. Obviously, we'll do builds, but it's going to take me a minute to get back and, and see what's useful and what's not, but let me tell you, I found another healer build that I like in PvP. More on that later. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.